Hey, you're listening to a Bible Bro Down podcast, a member of the Trinity Commission. This is where brothers come together to sharpen one another so we can rightly divide the Word of God. I'm Matt. And this is Billy. And today, in the little mini, we're going to talk about who Pharaoh is a shadow of. Uh, if you've heard us for any amount of time, if you've been listening for a while, we are constantly referring back to the Exodus and how uh, the entire Exodus is a shadow of us now. God purchased Israel so that they could go out and serve him and be taken to the promised land. There, They followed uh, God through the wilderness. He fed them. He clothed them. Everything. Gave them everything they needed to make it to the promised land. Likewise, he purchased all of us through the blood of Christ. We are being led to the promised land, and he is the the bread of life, and we are to depend on him uh, and seek him as we go through this wilderness. And so, uh, if all of that is a shadow, is uh, Pharaoh a shadow of something? And if so, what? And what does it even mean? Right. That about right? Yep. So, Billy... Is he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see Pharaoh in Egypt as like a shadow of Satan and his kingdom on earth. Mm-hmm. You know, he held he held, he held the people in bondage and was the taskmaster of them. Um, in Exodus 1, it says, you know, Pharaoh saw how Israel was blessed and acted wisely against them. We kind of see in the garden how, you know, God had blessed these two people and the serpent acted wisely against them. He enslaved all of Israel and appointed taskmasters over them. We see the same kind of um, language used with Satan as well, where, you know, Satan is the one that brought, you know, persuaded, you know, used the desires that were already in Eve and Adam and persuaded them to rebel. And that obviously made them slaves to to death and sin. Um, And then he um, attempted to stop the blessings by killing the firstborn males. Uh, If anyone thinks that (laughs) Satan hasn't been trying to stop god's plan by killing males all throughout history i don't know what your what bible you're reading <laughs> mm-hmm. so so yeah satan is the called the ruler of this world we do have a handful of scripture that says that explicitly which is <laughs> mighty convenient I mean, you want to just run down the list real quick and then we'll we'll talk about it yeah i think that one of the first things we see is the um the temptation of christ right mm-hmm. where satan Brings him off and he pulls, takes him up on the mountain and he shows him like the entire kingdoms of the world, right? And basically says, hey, you know, if you do this, took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Satan obviously thought that it was his world. The Similarly, you have, uh, so yeah, he, he, he's the rule of this world. He's going to give Jesus something like, he doesn't know that Jesus is the son of God and eternal and made him. <laughs> um, similarly, second Corinthians four, four, he has said, or it says Satan, who is the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of God, uh, of the good news. They don't understand the message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So God, Satan is the God of this world and blinds the, the minds of those who don't believe. How interesting. Which ties to Matthew 13. 19 yeah go for it uh that's where it says that uh that's the first soil the parable of the, the four soils where it says that um the word of the kingdom that has been sown into their heart the devil comes and takes it away after they've you know rejected it judge um john twelve thirty one. now judgment is upon this world now the ruler of this world will be cast out there's one in revelation that you kind of mentioned before yeah revelation 2 he's talking to one of the churches pergamum <laughs> yeah 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 to the angel of the church of pergamum um, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Now, could he be saying that Satan's throne is in Pergamum? Eh, it could be. Uh, we, we think that there is more to these seven churches than just letters to the physical seven churches. These are also letters to, I mean, the, we believe this, this is, uh, speaking of future events. We believe this is eschatological revelation is. And, uh, these, these messages are to the world. The, this prophecy, that was given was not just to these individual churches, but to everybody who reads it. That's why there's a blessing for everybody who reads it. And uh, so when he says, I know where you're, you dwell, where Satan's throne is, if this is talking in the world, then this, this aligns with the rest of Scripture. Satan's throne is this earth. He is the, the God, little g, or the ruler of this earth. That's really interesting that you just said that. I try to make interesting points all the time. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> What comment? Uh, of, I mean, of course I know what you're talking about, because uh, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I have no idea. You know, what, what did I say? The, and we may get pushback, which is fine. Um, the amillennial position takes a lot of revelation as already occurred, right, mm-hmm. with 70 AD. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that these, you know, m- much of it is symbolic and it was all fulfilled, basically. Not all, but most of it was fulfilled in uh, AD 70 with the fall of Jerusalem and the temple. Um, but it's interesting that it does, we've m- mentioned that, but I never tied it together with that those who read this book will be blessed. If all of it, if <laughs> almost all of the entire book, except like the end, right, where, you know, the second coming, which is like 19, 20, 21, the last three chapters or four chapters, if all of it was already completed, what's the point of the blessing? Uh, the same blessing you get from reading Exodus. You just, you see God's work <laughs> right, carried out. You know, why specifically point out that specific book? Seems like, yeah, I don't know. seems like it, 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 again, it's, it's not like super it's strong evidence, but I think there's implication there that, Hey, these things in here can benefit you if you know what's in them all, not just the last three or four chapters. Yeah, and and also I think that, that Satan's throne is there uh, later on in verse thirteen, Revelation two verse thirteen, uh, where Satan dwells. To think that that's just Pergamum, when clearly other passages in the New Testament are saying that Satan is is ruling and dwelling, dwelling in and ruling over the entire world, uh, it, it seems much more consistent to to assume that this is a bigger audience than just the one church or the one yeah one one city pergamum uh, that doesn't make sense to me right it uh you know sons of light or sons of darkness you know that's kind of the the two um factions that we see in scripture sons of darkness are you know follow or following satan yes as christ said to the pharisees you are of your father the devil you know who's a liar from the beginning and we see that it's those who are not following the Lord um, in the wilderness, which is, you know, everyone's life today is the wilderness, you know, where God is here to lead us to the promised land. Um, if you're not following the Lord, then you are following Satan. You are of his kingdom and you are in bondage to him. And, and you're, you're going to be destined. Uh, destined doesn't mean predestined. Like there's no lock. If you're not locked in, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you are on the same path that he's going to, which is, you know, eternal destruction or destruction or whatever. Um, you know, you are a, a slave to the one whom you obey, you know, either the spirit to eternal life or your flesh, which leads to corruption. And again, um, one of the points that I wanted to make, and you want to say anything about that? <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to kind of back up and paint the picture. Uh, but if you want to make a point real quick before we do that. So, yeah, i um, backing up about they were in bondage, right? All of Israel was mm-hmm. in bondage and, be, and and God said he wanted them to be freed so that they could serve him. Right, they were in bondage. They couldn't serve him. They had they they were following the ruler, a uh, uh, pharaoh. Um, they couldn't do anything else. So God freed them in order to give them the choice, give them the ability to follow him and inherit the promises and do righteousness. They couldn't do that in in as slaves. So God freed them, which is what God has done to all of us through through Christ. He's purchased us and freed us out of that bondage, and He's offering to lead us to the promised land. But as it says of the Egyptian or the the Israelites, some of them rejected that. They didn't trust God. They didn't follow God. And it says they went back to bondage. That they were God's children, but because of their defect and not following Him, they were no longer children. <clears throat> they sold their clothes. Yep. <clears throat> um. So, looking at the Exodus as a whole, you have Pharaoh probably being a either a a foreshadowing of satan or a shadow of satan <clears throat> excuse me because satan was first um a shadow of satan or just a shadow of the rulers and powers of this world that, that would be satan and anybody that's on his team um my question billy you got that we've said that uh israel when they're in the wilderness is all people because all have are being presently passed over god's not judging us the moment we we Right. Uh, commit a sin. He doesn't strike us with lightning. Um, who are the Egyptians? Uh, Satan's servants. Is it? I mean, that, cause maybe, maybe Israel is the elect and Egyptians are the non-elect. <laughs> but some of them actually follow too. Unbam. Uh, hmm. Did you say unbam? Yeah. Yeah. I took my bam back. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it says that when they leave, that there was a multitude that went with them. Remember? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, 
just because I, I don't know. I'm just trying to I'm trying to make it all fit together properly. Satan, uh, now, the, it the could rule be, of the world. You know, going back to what you're saying. Sorry to interrupt. It could be mm-hmm. that none of the Egyptians went. It could be that they, you know, they they're a picture of of you know Satan's servants and they stay with him. And the mixed multitude could be all the other slaves that were in Egypt because I'm sure that Egypt had slaves from every nation that they conquered and that was part of them and that mixed multitude could have been basically all the slaves that decided to go with them and said hey i'm gonna sneak in there and hey i'm I'm jewish i'm jewish i'm going with them right you know joining up with them and saying hey i'm gonna follow that god and get my freedom um uh you think about that every one of these egyptians as that what we just read um in the previous um on monday knew who god was you know that they will all know who i am right they all had the knowledge and the, and the understanding uh, and basically had, had cast their lots with Pharaoh. And it's interesting that Pharaoh knew exactly who God was but resisted. And he saw God's power and resisted He and all that. And then it was later on that God firmed up his resistance and, and accomplished various things through, um, through Pharaoh's choices that he was making. Um, and I think that we... Uh, my personal view is the same thing occurred with Satan and his people that are that that are following him, and that if you think about the delusion that Satan would have to have <laughs> to think that that he's still doing right, he's still resisting, he's still thinking that he can beat God, right? That God firmed up. Okay, you've rejected me. You saw you you were with me for however long it was, right? You saw my power. You saw my whatever, and then you you chose to rebel against me, and now God. My view is that God is firming up, in essence, his delusion, right? Or, or as you read about, they will, um, that they will believe the lie, right? They can no longer see the light, right? That I think that, that's the same thing with Satan. That he he's so delusional, he's so firmed up and uh, hard-hearted, in essence. Obviously, he doesn't have a heart, so to speak. Um, that he thinks that he can win. He thinks that he thinks he can go to the Son of God and think, hey, hey, worship me, and I'll, I'll we'll be good. You know. He, he thinks that he has a, <laughs> a leg in this fight still. Yeah. So okay, oh. Satan. Uh, sorry, Pharaoh is is Satan and his his cohorts. Uh, the people underneath that are, um, everybody, essentially. The the Egyptians who stay. We'll say I think that's probably the appropriate way to say it. Those who stay are are his children. They mm-hmm. stay in Egypt. The ones who follow the Lord. Are yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if the shadow begins there. I know the shadow makes sense once <clears throat> after the Passover. Once they le- are led out of Egypt uh, in the wilderness, I think you, you. I think you said it right about you know those who stay are his servants. Well, just like um, the same language of us and the angels uh, is the same. Like it talks about uh, the servants of the Lord, and that can often refer to angels, and it also can refer to people that we're all. When it says the holy ones of the Lord, that could be angels or it can be us. Yeah. The servants of the Lord, that could be angels or it could be us. The servants of Satan, that could be people who fell with him or it could be people who are following him, not God. People. So I think you're you're you have, that word clicked with me that they're yeah they're servants of Pharaoh. They they're they're they've casted a lot with him, whether that means they're demonic or people. Yeah. And I, I think it's important. I mean, it, I, we said this last time. There's God doesn't accidentally, you know. There's not like coincidences where God's like, "Oh, that worked out pretty good." That sounds like what I did over here. <laughs> um, he, right. he plans these things, and so the shadow may. Those are up for interpretation, and I I think we're on the right track with with. Uh, I think Pharaoh is definitely Satan. That's who he's meant to portray, and we're being pot but but pot bought out from underneath him. Um, he is no longer our ruler because we have been crucified with Christ and we are raised to a new life. We are no longer in bondage. Uh, whether or not the Egyptians are, are, if we got that right, you know, maybe not. But it doesn't matter. I think I think we're close. Uh, the important thing is that uh, the I think we are spot on with the imagery of being in the wilderness and being led by God and trusting in Him. Uh, that all mean the Israelites in the desert is us in life currently, and we are all headed for the promised land. I think that's that's one hundred percent. But it, it's interesting. It's a, it, looking for the shadows in yeah, scriptures. We, amazing. We we tend to think that um, that it was only 
uh, the, the the Jews who were God's people were the Old Testament is, is quite clear that anyone could become a Jew uh, if they just if they decided to become a Jew they'd have to be circumcised and then basically follow the same things that the Jews followed uh, and there's nothing in in the text that says that any, any Egyptian like hey I, I want to follow them and they could you know become again they go back to that mixed multitude who were they and, and um <clears throat> What what did they what group did they represent is an interesting thing. Um, so going back to the other, how long have we been doing this? <laughs> Sixteen minutes. So going back to um, this picture is obviously uh, the Pharaoh and the Harding of Pharaoh. Paul uses it in Romans nine as a um, saying that this is kind of the same thing that's happening with Israel of that time, right? The Jews. Uh, Back then, the the Jews were showed mercy, and Pharaoh was hardened. And now, what's occurring in in Paul's time? Israel is being hardened, and the Gentiles are being showed mercy. Yeah, and, and uh, this ties into uh, Galatians and the the uh, the second born. And I, I kind of want to save that because I think it's a, a super interesting mm-hmm. uh, study or episode that we can do. Uh, but yeah, the, the the concept of the second born being blessed and uh, who the second born is and who Israel was, but who are they now? And uh, Galatians just really busts open dispensationalism. Um, yeah, but I I'll, I want to do some more research and write that up before we get into all that. Uh, yeah, It'd yeah, it's in Romans is it fourteen where it says. Uh, or it might be 12. I think it's 12, actually, yeah. Where it says Israel um, were elect for promise's sake, but they were enemies because of the gospel, mm-hmm. right? And that's, that's again, a shadow of really all people, too. We, we've been all chosen um, to be redeemed, to be the tribe of his inheritance, to be um, freed from bondage and be offered salvation by trusting in God. So we're, we're you know, in essence, elect for that sake. But if we disobey, if we don't trust in God, then we're enemies of God because of the gospel. We've we've decided to um, reject God, go back to our bondage, and and, and follow, uh, not follow Him. Uh, I think that um, what, uh, I see what you're doing, but I, I think in Romans he's talking specifically about like you know the promises, like the the save the the Messiah is going to come through your lineage. Uh, your people are going to bless the world. That's that's how they were elect for those promises, and then. They are rejecting the gospel of righteousness by well, faith. That would be one yeah. promise, not promises. Well, there's more than one promise there. <laughs> right, but all their promises related to spiritual promises. And that's the point, is that he freed them all. He, 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 they were, they were, I promised to purchase you and, and, you know, be your God and all this stuff, but that was all conditional. <clears throat> right. And then those who are, you know, who've fallen away and then come back, they've basically been regrafted in they've, to the promise. True, true. Yeah. Yeah, and and then that goes back to the whole remnant, right? The remnant idea yeah. of <clears throat> I always have a remnant. That means a remainder, right? They've remained in the promise. They've remained in in God's grace that they've they were born under. <laughs> the remnant to the remainder. That never clicked to me until that all happened. <clears throat> yep. Cool. Okay. So yeah. So Pharaoh is uh, Satan, and so he we pretty sure he represents um Again, I and I oh I, I pulled up Luke twenty four because I, I I think it's it's the reason why we are always looking for these shadows and why why we're constantly seeing them uh, is because they're there and and what's interesting is that uh, after Jesus is resurrected he meets this is one of the examples there are others um, oh I lost it this is Luke twenty four twenty six through <clears throat> twenty seven. Uh, there, yeah, Jesus appears to guys on the road to Emmaus and he's talking to them and he, they ask him, was it not necessary for the cry? Or excuse me. I think he asked them. Um, he says, and he said to them, Oh, foolish men of slow heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? So he's asking them, Hey, don't you get it? Like Christ had to suffer. And these people, these guys he's talking to obviously aren't getting it. Uh, so verse 27, then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. We know that, uh, in John five, he tells the Pharisees, you look for, you, you go into the scripture looking for eternal life. What you don't get is they're talking about me. They're talking about Christ. And here he is explaining to these guys on the road to Emmaus, all the ways that the scriptures point to him. And uh, so when we're in there looking at all these shadows and we're trying to explain them and, and understand them, 
that this is what we're shooting for. <laughs> we want to know all the ways that scripture is pointing to Christ. And, uh, it's it, the more you see them, the more there are, <laughs> but, like they just keep showing up and, uh, mm-hmm. the, the cooler they get. I mean, not that they're not, the first one wasn't amazing, but the, you know, at, the farther we go down this, the, the more that we see and the, and the bigger the picture gets and the more intricate it gets. And it's just, it's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. You can, and people might think, oh, you're just taking it too far. Mm-hmm. I think scripture is very clear um, when you look at it because you can't just say, oh, I think this means this. What we find, like in the prodigal son, if you go look to our, our study, that you can see that, you know, they, he squandered his inheritance. That's that's showing out throughout scripture. They He went after foreign gods and foreign lands. That's what the Jews did. They they left God and they chased after foreign gods and, and foreign lands, you know, and they, they squandered all that stuff. You can see that it, it's lined up all throughout scripture. So it's not just you're pulling something. You, you can actually see it occur. Go to the, um, the, the atonement through the Exodus and you can see all the language that God used of purchasing and buying and redeeming and saving them in the Passover lamb is the same exact language that we have of Christ and, and, and us. Um, if you just go a little bit farther down in Luke 24 uh, with the, the disciples, that they were, the 11 were there and there were some others with them. And the Lord says that, that they were talking in the room and it says that he appeared to them. And they <clears throat> he's talking to them and he shows them their hands and their feet and all that stuff. And he says, um, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all these things are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So he basically just says, everything that's ever been written uh, relates to me and other things. Then he said, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Right? Verse 45 in Luke 24. So to the disciples. And and some people think, well, that means that they, they, they knew everything. No, it didn't. I mean, we still see them making mistakes and, and all that stuff. But they, they gained some insight to things that had never been understood before. You know, the writer of Hebrews, I mean, he, he does some amazing things with, like, picturing the temple and the law and, you know, the that Christ is a priest and he was a shadow of the priest there and the high priest and the sacrifices. Uh, and then the guy in Hebrews, you know, there's like five or six passages about this guy named Melchizedek, you know, with Abraham. And this guy gives like a whole chapter on what what that was and what that meant. You know, just gives crazy insights to what it was. So the Spirit of God will open our minds to understand the Scriptures and to see <clears throat> the truths that were meant uh, to be learned in the Scriptures so we can better know God and, and give Him glory and honor and worship Him. So, All right, next time. Starting Romans. Hope you like it. See you later. Peace.